What's going on, guys? It's your boy here, AB, Affliction Builder. Um, you know, I just I took a break for a little while. Um, had some things I was working on. Um, the last video I made a couple, I think it was only 1187, and that's the video or product I want to talk to you today. Um, you've probably seen this. Online, I was shooting this out at the range. It's 1187. It's a Form 1 short barrel shotgun, and uh, it was quite a, a product or uh, an effort trying to get this thing to run correctly and efficiently with low brass or the you know the shot that I wanted to use in this particular shotgun. And uh, I actually got this gun new, and it was 1187 Sportsman, and I ordered online. I think I got it from Bud's Gun Shop. And ironically, one of these, I never tested it with the 18-inch, 20-inch barrel it came with. Um, and then once the Form 1, you know, got approved, I went ahead and I cut the barrel down and made the... Uh, you know, requires modifications to it. And uh, this is actually a second barrel, but this was the first barrel that I got. And it had, again, it had all ribs on it. So I cut the ribs off to make it flatter. I used the uh, Wilson Tactical Scattergun Technology sight post that I glued over the top of a, a bead. Uh, and then I put a roll pin through I left one of the uh, the risers on the vents and I tapped the vent on the end with one roll pin 16 inch um, so that's what I did so I went ahead did that I cut it down this is 12 inch barrel by the way I didn't know at the time can you go 12 because most of the stock ones are 14 inch law enforcement barrels that's what remington i guess wilson combat made so i before i even started wondering how to make the damn thing run i just cut it down to 12 inches because i wanted it short and of course when i started test firing it it got jammed the bolt would just go back and it would get jammed wouldn't cycle at all so not shooting it i don't know if it was the gun or from what i did so I cleaned everything, polished all the components, whatever. And it wasn't until I read a blog from an old timer on the uh, internet that said basically, you know, if you want the thing to run on gas, um, go out to the range with a box of drill bits and start enlarging the gas holes little by little, increment by increment, you know, until you get the biggest gas size that will fire the round and then you know you have enough gas to do so and that was one of my biggest things so you could imagine this is a 12 inch barrel but if you have an 18 or 22 you got all this barrel in front of you that has time to build up pressure to throw I don't know it's hard to see these gas ports and here I don't know if I could get a good angle but you, you might be able to see there there's two gas ports right there. And you see I open them up pretty good. That's over an eighth of an inch. A couple drill bits like over an eighth of an inch or so. But you can see the difference. They're, they're really small because you have so much barrel on the bigger guns and pressure back up to push the mechanism. But in these, you only have a split second between here and here to where the wad exits the barrel. It's a very limited amount you have, so you got to try to get that as much of that as you can. And the biggest problem is that, like I said, when I started this venture, I didn't know what size they were. And people had brought Remington shotguns. Um, they bought the barrel, and the barrel couldn't fire low brass. They told, or what I understand from reading, that it only fired high brass and such. And so I tried to call Remington to get a, you know, an idea, are the holes eighth of an inch 
on your short barrel, 14 inch barrel, are they bigger than that? And they said that was, you know, a proprietary uh, thing, you know, to tell me exactly what size the orifices may or may not be. They said they were drilled at a different angle, whatnot. But I could buy a barrel from them, I think they're like 200 some odd dollars. So that wasn't really too much help. And then I think I called Wilson Combat, because they used to make them. And Wilson Combat, so the guy, I think, that made them, he no longer worked there, and they weren't really sure about it either. So like I said, I ended up going to Harbor Freight. I don't have the box with me, but I bought a machinist drill bit set, uh, like 41 bits in a set. And um, so I just went out there and took my, uh, you know, my cordless drill and just te tediously just went boom, boom. Then we're finally, it started going back a little bit, a little bit, a little bit more. And then finally I got the magic size that worked. And it was running with this barrel, okay? But as you can see, the other problem with this barrel is there's a, a metal collar on there. And you can see under this collar, I don't know if you can see it, there's relief holes. And... So you could see one of the, re there's two of them. These are the front holes I drilled out. And you can see behind there's two relief holes. So I think when this was like a three inch or magnum barrel so that if you were to put hard buckshot or high, high rounds, the, it, it, would, it wouldn't cause the gun or the action to over pressure itself. And it would go, it would leak, you know, outside this collar. So with all that, a year later, the damn thing uh, stopped working, or I couldn't working again. And so I thought, well, maybe I took on too, too much by 12 inch. Maybe you can only go down to 14 inch, you know, because most of the SBRs for Remington 1100, 1187 are 14 inches. Now, Black Ace is tactical. They came out, they made a new one, but I think all the recoil system is in the magazine or it's ahead of the the trigger instead of the uh having the big return spring in the back of the gun so i think that's a different thing that they have a 12 inch but uh so in any respect i went ahead and got another barrel and only cut this one down to 14 inch okay this is a remington regular 18 inch barrel and another problem with this was that I cut off the sights were originally silver soldered on. I got a guy around here that's a welder. I asked him, hey, if I bring this to you, can you just tack this sight on here? And I guess for whatever reason, if it's a Parker Oise barrel or whatever it is, uh, it wouldn't take a weld. Okay. So the only thought that I came up with, I've done in the past, I took my drill press. And you can see that I got a button head cap screw. I went ahead and drilled a hole through, down through the, this whole site. And then I just threaded the barrel 830 seconds. And I glued it with a two epoxy glue and a uh, slotted uh, nut, you know, set screw type deal. Button head. And it seems to work. I, I, you know, shot it a couple times. It seems pretty good. So, um, I took this out, shot it a couple times. It's doing pretty good. But again, when I got into the low brass, you know, even six bird shot, 1350 velocity, I still was having regularly issues. So the other thing that I learned that they did with the three inch magnum or the, the this other barrel, and I read with some of these is Remington uses a uh, acti seal activator to shoot the low brass bird shot out of with the gun. So just to show you, I went ahead for shits and giggles because it's only a $10 part from Midway. I ordered it and when I took it to the range the other day, uh, it ran pretty good. And 
just to show you. Here's the barrel. And then these, I think I opened these ports are open just over an 80. See, they're not as big as the other, but pretty big. But these are about over an eighth or two, a bit or two over an eighth. And I might have got away with being a little less, but uh, anyways, this is the two-piece seal that comes with the gun. Okay, that's stock. This is the little rubber boot that goes in indentation, and this is the third thing. This is the actual barrel seal. Okay, and it is metal. I, in the picture, I didn't know whether it was metal or it was a rubber piece, but it is another metal piece. So this is your two-part piston system. Then this metal piece, the seal activator is new. That goes there, and then voila. Now, if I'm going to shoot high brass before I put this in there, this will shoot pretty good on high brass. And uh, buckshot stuff, I, guess I would probably take this seal activator out on that, but... This is mostly a fun gun for me, and mostly I just want to shoot 100 around bulk packs or whatever at the range. So I'm just going to leave this on here. And then the other thing that I uh, that I did was I went and I ordered the Wilson Combat Plus One uh, adapter, which allows you to get an extra shell over stock, so it'll hold six or five. I'm sorry, I said a four. And the thing you have to do is you either have to Dremel out, like I did, the detents, or you have to put a socket, or Brown Ells has a tool that you drive it in with a hammer, and then it slowly presses the indentations flush. So the shotgun full shell will get past these indentations. I didn't want to get stuck, and I didn't want to mess around with the... Uh, socket getting stuck in here so I opted to just drill them out with a quarter inch drill on either side and then grind it out and it works fine now and so uh, with that I could so you just put the barrel back on this and uh the screw or the spring also comes with a high visible follower this which is pretty cool oops i forgot to put the uh, metal hand guard on and it comes with a compression ring <clears throat> This is pretty good little thing. They got the extension. It's got a side sling adapter. Wilson Combat makes it. Right here's a sling adapter. And uh, it's a nice compact package. Um, I have you got a choked uh, bolt handle, which isn't bad. This is the cheapest on the market. It's like $10, $9.99, I also got a GG and G. Cost me thirty dollars. A knurled handle, which I like it, but the the knurl is a little wider than I wanted, so I ordered a Briley, which is a straight one. It's long but thinner, but I mean this thing works good. I also upgraded and got a stainless, as you can see, nickel bolt. I thought I'd add a little bit of color to the gun with the stainless steel bolt, easier to clean. I got the same rear. Wilson Combat Sight, and uh, I'm pretty impressed with it. Um, if you go look at the video, I'll probably be making another video on this, um, but uh, I'm pretty happy with this. I can shoot low brass. Uh, you know, the box is like five ninety nine a box or so, so I could go out there play with it and then come back clean it up, but. Uh, it took me a while to get it running. It was quite a story getting this thing going. 
The other thing I just want to caution about is I also at one point had a shell holder on this, like my pump. And one of the problems was what for every reason when I put the uh the Mesa tactical bolts in there for whatever reason they were either machined a little thin or a little thick that it would not function, would not eject. And it wasn't until I took it to the range when I took it apart and just put the regular push pins in and then it ran fine. So that was another hiccup I had to overcome. So when you have these semi auto shotguns uh also be careful with the uh you know shot shell holder other than that it's i'm pretty happy with it you know it's got the high visible follower there um like i said there's nothing i'm really much going to do with this except just shoot it now since i got the thing running you know and uh that's what i want to do with anyway shoot it so Anyways, this is AB. Thanks for listening to me. I have more videos coming to you guys. And uh, I appreciate all the responses, the, the comments, the love. If you like it, subscribe. And uh, I'll do some more exercise videos too. Since you're getting requests for that. Thank you.